G'day guys and welcome to another episode of Exposed. Today we are back on my account. We're going to be going through the runes and the units that I'm using in my CC Cleave team. Now we were able to achieve G2 with this team. We haven't done wings in a couple of days, so we have degraded back down to Guardian 1 currently. But let me just go through them all and I'll show you exactly what units we're using, explain a little bit of the situations that I use them for, and then the runes that are on each unit as well. So let's get started. Let's get started with Taor here. So Taor is on a Swift will set. I've opted for the Swift here just to get as many stats out on him as possible instead of the Violent set. He is on an attack, crit damage, and attack set with some extra skill 3 accuracy and some more damage on the right side and some single target damage as well as a little bit of minus on the left side here. Now he is very high attack, he is used into things like Douglas in particular but also whenever they're bringing very fire heavy, so if there's a Carnal, Juno, Antares, Douglas, three or so of those units out there, I'll typically then be bringing the Tail in conjunction with the Poseidon. The next unit that we have here is the Sion. Sion I haven't been using a great deal of. He gets a little bit of play whenever I'm looking for a double bomber situation. Usually though, whenever I only need one bomber, I'll be taking the John instead, but he is a good option if you don't have John or you don't have another better bomber to just use the Sion in that slot as well. It's a great way to get out damage that doesn't require any um, speed. So he's things like bombers and that are great into whenever your opponent is drafting Leo. Now he is on a fatal will set here with a speed attack and attack. We've gone for some extra bomb damage on the right side and then just some more bomb damage on the left side as well. So as much attack as you can possibly get, you want those bombs to be doing big damage and be very impactful. The good thing with Sian is obviously when he gets killed and then revived, he has the immunity and the invincibility on, so he does protect himself. So quite often when you bring him, you know you're going to be getting those bombs off. You want them to do big damage and try and take out as many units as you can when they detonate. The next unit we have here is Poseidon. I've been using a lot of Poseidon. He's an incredibly strong CC slash damage dealing unit. Um, he is on a despair will set here, so we are going for the despair, having the two AoE units, the two AoE skills in both skill three and skill two. The despair is incredibly good value on him for that reason, and he's on a speed, crit damage, and attack build. We've opted for some extra skill three accuracy and a bit more damage on the right side here, and then just some extra damage on the left side as well. Now, I'll be bringing Poseidon a lot of matches. I bring him quite early on just because of the limitations in my monster box here. He's a good unit that if you do have to bring him in that third or fourth slot, he is doable in that slot as he's not too bad into wind units, which typically any water CC would be weak against because his skill three doesn't glance. So you get the added advantage of not having to worry about a glancing when you're trying to push back your unit. So because of that, he's incredibly strong and that's why I pick him a lot of the time I pick him earlier than what you realistically would want to, but I just don't have other options. So for me, he kind of fills that slot as an early-ish CC unit pick that is more difficult to counter than, say, the Tail. The Tail I only bring whenever there's two fire units. The Poseidon I can bring into wind units. Next, we have the Samuth here. Now, Samuth is only when I'm really, really needing that extra bit of speed, the, the 33 lead. I don't have the Oliver. I do have a Vanessa, but she's even worse than Samuth for this team. So I use the Samuth in this slot. He does offer a little bit of pseudo CC with the single turn potential skill cooldown on skill two here as well as the slow but he's basically here for the speed lead and then a little bit of nuke damage as well so if they're really trying to go fast and i'm trying to go fast but they also don't have any healers that's when Samuth really shines but with his passive skill being able to die revive and do big damage to try and nuke the enemy down and his rune set is on an attack, crit damage, and attack build. I've gone for some attack proportional to lost HP on the right side here, and then some more attack proportional to lost HP on the left. So when he does get killed and he is low health, his attack goes way up and he does a lot more damage in that situation. The next one we have here is more. Now I have him on a despair energy set. Despair broken is fine, like basically whatever gives you the best stats. Uh, you want him obviously faster than everybody else in your team to set up for those strengths. You want really good accuracy and really, really high attack to try and deal with the Douglas that's going around. So him alone is able to solo the Douglas at the end of the match with his attack break on skill one 
and having really, really high attack and elemental advantage over the Douglas. Douglas is not really that much of a problem in this team as long as you have them more there and then one other unit that can kill Douglas. So you, basically any team, you need to have two units that are able to kill him or else they can just ban the one unit out and then you're left with getting Dougie soloed. Now the runes on him are speed, attack, and attack. And I've gone for a lot of additional damage on the right side and then some more additional damage on the left side with his skill two being a multi-hit. Now he is my first pick this season with this team in particular. He is the strongest meta unit that I have for running CC Cleave, being both the speed lead and the strip, as well as offering a pseudo CC with his AOE skill two with a despair set on him. So he's just an incredibly annoying unit as well as offers some RNG potential if I do get outsped, but ideally it's giving me the opportunity to go first, taking that speed lead early on. Next we have the Verd on a Swift Nemesis set, and that's the stats there. So I've actually slowed him down. I was running him a lot faster, initially about 20 speed faster, um, on a Swift Broken set, but I found it more beneficial to put the faster set on Chiwu when I'm really trying to go fast and getting the extra value out of having him on a Nemesis set and just having more stats in general. Uh, and going a little bit slower. Most of the time when you're really speed racing, you're not wanting to bring Verd anyway. You're usually gonna take a shear over him as your attack bar booster. So slowing him down and getting extra value out of him so he's better into those slower matches, I found is a lot more beneficial than trying to have him super, super fast. Now he is on a speed crit rate and attack. And then we've just gone from additional damage on the right side and some more additional damage on the left side here as well. Now he does have a reasonably high attack here. So again, just to try and deal with that Douglas, the attack break out of more, and then your, my Verd can hit him easily and freely as well. So Douglas for me is, is not a problem at all. Very, very rarely do I have to even ban the Douglas or very rarely is it a problem that actually will kill me. Next we have the Chiwu here. Now, because I don't have a... Uh, Oliver or I don't have a Triton my go faster situation where I need to bring two speed leads and two swift units is the Chiwu so we have more as my first speed lead Chiwu then offers me my second speed lead as well as is on my fastest swift set that I can possibly make with my swift broken using my two quad runes here and then just my fastest swift runes so he's on a speed attack and flat attack and then this is the last rune here my fastest swift rune on this slot we've gone for some extra skill three accuracy here and then just some additional damage on the right side and a little bit of minus damage these don't matter too much on Chiwu he really just needs to go first if I'm drafting Chiwu and I don't outspeed, I virtually always lose. He's only there for trying to give me that first turn. So because of that, as fast as I can possibly make him here at 319. The next unit we have here is the Antares. So he's not really part of a CC Cleave team, but he is left in the box here. If they steal a lot of my units, or I know that I can't possibly outspeed if they're going an Oliver Triton and say a Young Hong, I just can't outspeed that. I do not have the units available. I do not have the room quality to make up for the lack of units either in those situations. Whenever my opponent drafts in that particular way, I can pivot into a Luxac RNG sort of a situation just to try and give me a chance to win. And Antares is great for that. So he's still in the box, still in the same runes that I had him when I was running turn two on the Despair Revenge on a HP crit damage. HP with some uh, additional damage by attack artifacts as well. So ideally we're not wanting to bring him, but he's just there just in case we have to give up on first turn completely. Next we have the Ken on a Swift Blade set. I haven't actually used Ken yet. He's just here as a backup stripper in case uh, more Chiwu and Gina, my three primary strippers. If a couple of those get stolen, then I will be taking Ken just because he's the only other one I've got ruined up. He's on a speed crit damage and attack build with some extra skill two accuracy on his strip and additional damage and then some more additionals on the left side here as well. He does require a hundred crit rate though, so which is pretty achievable if you run a slower swift set like I have here. The next unit we have is Douglas. So again, Douglas is not really ideal for those first turn CC cleave. However, he is a great fifth pick. If ever the enemy is picking five units or four units and I'm okay to ban whatever the last pick is and none of those units can kill Douglas, that's when I can pick Douglas and as use him basically as a force ban more than a unit that's in and part of my team, which then allows me to take the rest of my team through that I want to get through. So that's the situation that I'm kind of using him right now 
now. I have got some couple of wins with him because there's been a few situations where he has been a force ban and rather than get out sped and have to deal with my entire team, they chose to take their chances and try and kill a Douglas without anything there that realistically had a good chance of doing it. And because of that, we got some Douglas solos and picked up a couple of wins just like that. So he is a great unit to still have there. And just in case, like I said, in that situation where nothing can kill him and use him purely as a force ban. He's on an attack crit damage and attack build. I've gone for the Vampire Blade. I don't really have great Nemesis runes or great Vampire runes. So just to kind of make up for that stats wise, I've opted for the Blade set here. And then I've gone for some counter attack damage and a bit more damage as well as a little bit of life drain. And then on the left side here, we've gone for some more counter attack damage, some more life drain, and then just some more little bits of damage here and there as well. I've also got the damage on fire here, which is pretty good because a lot of the time people will bring in Antares or people will bring a carnal and things like that into him so he's pretty good with some damage on fire as well next we have the bellinus on a violent will set here um, i don't bring him a great deal he's a very niche sort of fifth pick for me if there's no immunity on the other side there's no cleanse on the other side and they're sort of very wind heavy then i can bring the bellinus in there there's not too many situations like that but he has got a few matches with me so far this season and picked up a few wins in that slot when he's when he's able to be picked. And he is on a speed attack and attack build with some extra accuracy on the right side here and then just some additional damage on the left side. I've opted for the high attack build instead of a crit rate crit damage build. He does get some damage out with his dots as well as he offers the defense break. So I don't really need so much more damage out of him. I just need a little bit of damage, a little bit of control with his provokes and just to be the annoying sort of unit that he is. So that's why I've opted for the high attack and just gone for raw stats here again this also makes him better into douglas having the high attack as opposed to the crit rate crit damage means that it's less likely to glance on douglas and he's able to be used in that slot there as well the next one we have here is the john i've been using a lot of john John pairs incredibly well with Gina, the combo there between the one turn sleep and then the two turn bombs, basically turns any unit that is CC'd into a two turn CC, as well as offer massive damage. And we don't have to, without having to touch the unit. So anytime you can put damage on a unit without having to touch it is incredibly strong because then you don't need to worry about certain units that revenge or have passives and things like that that are effective when you touch them. So this is why I'm using a lot of John lately. It also prevents a lot of units from being drafted against me, in particular things like Leo, which is one of the more more force heavy bands that I have, especially running things like more, which scales off of his additional damage by speed. My Verd scales off his additional damage by speed. I use Poseidon and Tao that both scale off speed. Uh, the Savannah scales off speed. So a lot of units, Leo sort of hard counters. So a lot of times to prevent him from being drafted, I'll take the John earlier on. And he, like I said, pairs really well with Gina and prevents things from getting drafted against me that I don't want to see. He is on a violent will set here with a speed attack and attack. We've gone for some extra skill three accuracy on the right side here, and then a little bit of bomb up uh, damage on the left side. So just to try and get some extra damage out of him wherever we can um he, like i said he he's been a great unit for me uh, again with the sort of the limited monster box that i have he's provided the big damage pseudo cc that i'm missing uh and like i said that pairs really well with gina next we have the diana this is still the same diana that i was running when i was running turn two again she's the same the same reason she's here is the same as the antaras and the douglas it is a fifth pick only super niche force band situation so whenever they're very water heavy and they don't have much that can really deal with the diana here where diana will just rip through their entire team that's when i draft her purely just to get her banned or if they let her through they get so badly punished by it that she'll carry and, and we can wipe out the team just with her alone now she is on a violent will set on a HP, HP, HP build. I've opted for the uh, additional damage by attack here with some other additionals on the right side. Because I only bring her into very water heavy teams, I have gone for the minus water damage on the left side here. 
The next one we have is the Jemaya. He is really, really slow, but that's okay. I ideally want him to be moving after the enemy team so I can then cleanse whatever they do off of me. Um, and he has the will runes. Very high crit rate and good crit damage on him as well. I do want to get some extra value out of all his skill one and his skill two damage. He's on a violent will set on a speed crit damage and attack with some extra skill one crit damage here and some extra single target crit damage on the left side as well. He's only really being used when I'm taking him into sort of some CC teams uh, that, that I really want the cleanse for, as well as whenever I need an extra speed lead. He also offers the value of the reset from my team as well. So he's pretty he pairs pretty well with any sort of CC unit that's got a really powerful skill three or, or skill two or the combination of both. They can basically use those skills, then Jemaya goes, ventilates them, and they get them all back as well. So whenever I have a couple of those and I need another speed lead, I can sometimes bring the Jemaya to fill the role as a universal extra CC purely by ventilating the other CC units that I have out on the field. Next we have the Gani. I have been using a little bit of Gani. I don't have the Oliver and I don't have Chun Pung, which are probably the two better resetters in the game right now to be using, especially in this CC Cleave team because they offer extra value on top of that but because i don't have them i'm using gani in that slot so i'll bring gani whenever there's things like a josephine and a belio those sort of units that i really want to be resetting to get rid of their uh passive skills that are really going to affect my ability to control the enemy um, so that's when I'll pick him up as well as he he's another one that pairs really well with the Gina in terms of being able to ventilate a very strong skill three so I'll bring Gani plus another really strong CC unit, and then the Gina as well. So he has a couple of targets that are really, really strong and worth ventilating, and that's when you can get away with using Gani. You can't bring him into a team that's two strippers and just a booster like Verd, because then you don't have enough damage and enough uh, ability to control or hurt your opponent that he sort of just sits there, and then you eventually just get killed because you don't have any sustain. So... He's another one that I've been using kind of out of necessity rather than because he's super premium for this slot, but he does a good enough job that I can get some wins out and offer that reset for me. He's on the violent will set on a speed, HP and accuracy build. And we've gone through some additional damage on both the right side and on the left side here with his skill one being a multi-hit. It does scale fairly well and you get some extra damage out of him that way while still making him really really tanky okay next we have the savannah here i've gone for a kind of a bruiser build with really good accuracy as well and again this is another one that we've opted to drop the crit rate and drop the crit damage on this helps i know it's a wind unit but it does help into douglas even being on this build with her as well as well as this actually helps into things like ragdoll which i see a lot of being up in high g1 g2 area you see ragdoll a lot so having low crit on some of your units is actually really beneficial and with her she still gets more than enough damage out to fill that role as a pseudo damage slash cc unit and she also offers the defense break the pushback on skill three the speed buff for your team so I don't need the high, high damage out of her. I'd rather have her there as a CC unit that does damage rather than a damage dealing unit that does CC. So she's on a Despair Blade set. So this has actually helped with the extra little bit of CC as well with the Despair Chance on her skill three on a speed attack and HP build. And then I've just gone for some extra skill three accuracy and additional damage here. And then just some more additionals and a bit of crit damage lesson and whatever on the right, on the left side here. So this one here, we could probably upgrade for some more additionals, I think, but it, it honestly doesn't really matter too much. There's a little bit of value here that we're getting out of it already. So that's kind of good enough. Uh, next, next we have the Leo. I haven't really used Leo at all, um, but he is there for if my opponent is also trying to go speed and I've gone more invert, I can then pick pivot into the Gina, Leo, and John. I don't then need any speed really in that team. It does limit my more invert a little bit, but doesn't it hurt the damage coming out of both Gina and John, as well as then I get the Verd Leo combo, which is pretty strong. So I will use him if ever I'm versing someone who's really racing speed and they've stolen, say my Poseidon, they've stolen my Savannah then I'll be using what usually is a force band for me into my enemy and making it a force band for them. Or they just have to live with the fact that now they have Leo on the field and all their damage is being like mitigated. So he is still on the violent nemesis set as well on an attack, crit damage and attack. 
Um, and then I've just gone for some single target and skill 2 crit damage here, and then just some minus damage on the left side and a bit of damage dealt on water on the left side as well. Next we have the Ashir uh, on a swift shield set, and he is uh, on basically almost as fast as I can make him. I can speed him up a little bit if I wanted to drop the shield set, however I do like that shield set. It offers a little bit more sustainability for me, and just a little bit of extra value. I bring the Ashir whenever I'm really, really racing first turn. I'll swap out the Verd in the team for the Ashir just to give me that extra bit of speed to try and go first and try and outspeed some things like Trines and that. He isn't the fastest though, so I still do have trouble trying to outspeed any sort of 33 Sekhmet or 33 Lee Trident. It is an issue for me, but the extra value we get out of it, and a lot of the time just even putting him down and threatening to go first turn will make your opponent back away from it and then pivot usually into a hard turn two sort of style. So he is there and does allow me to take first turn, even the fact he's a little bit slower. The shield set as well into things like Gianna doesn't actually hurt you because the Gianna does enough damage to break the shield set, so they don't actually get the stun off the shield. So if you are off will on some units, you can still take him into Gianna and still be pretty effective like this um, and his runes are a speed hp and hp and then we've opted for a lot of additional damage obviously with his skill 3 being a multi-hit as well so a lot of additional damage by speed on either side here Next, we have the Kinky on a Despair Endure set. Uh, not quite 100 resistance yet. That is something I'm still working on. He's another sort of option here. Like I said, the same as the Antares, the same as the Douglas and the Diana and the Leo. It's a flex sort of fifth pick whenever there's anything out there that can't kill him. These days, that is so rare for Kinky. There's almost always something out there that's going to be able to kill him, either with doing enough damage or just the possibility that they're on Despair set also makes him kind of really weak in RTA right now but he is there just in case that that situation does pop up I can bring him and then just use him in that slot there as either a force ban or as the potential to solo the enemy team and he is on an attack HP and HP build with some extra additionals and recovery on the right side and then just some minus damage from wind on the left side here the reason I've gone for really high minus damage from wind is because of Oliver Oliver's skill 3 does enough damage to not proc the kinky passive so by having really really high amounts of minus damage from wind people that can usually kill a kinky with an oliver can't kill my kinky with an oliver so it just catches them off guard and we can pick up some wins that way next we have the thrain on a violent will set i haven't actually used thrain at all yet um he because i again i prefer usually to opt for the john whenever i'm looking for another sort of damage dealing cc unit or the poseidon um, I already have the Gina there with dots and things like that. And I, a lot of the time I'm seeing a lot of Junos. So Thrain won't really help me with that. But he is there just as an extra option, just in case, on a speed HP and HP build. And we've gone for some extra accuracy on this side, and then just some more additionals on the left side here. Now, lastly, the Gina here is also on a Violent Will set. This, I'm picking Gina virtually every match. Without having either Joe Gun or Chung Pung, she's kind of filling that role for me for both of those. She's weaker than both of those units individually. However, she fills the slot and the role that both of them offer combined. So she, I use her as the stripper instead of Joe Gun with her skill two. It is a reliable strip, but it's only for one buff. However, if I'm going first, they only have wheel rooms on. I only need to strip one thing. And then also offers the buff block. So this is actually really strong into Wooster. It's really strong into Diana. It's really strong into Riley. So I use her as that role, as well as with her skill three being big damage, offering four two turn dots, as well as the one turn sleep. I'm kind of using her as a pseudo Chumpung with a bit of damage and a little bit of CC. It's not as strong as Chung Pung. It doesn't offer the pushback and the reset, which basically they can't violent proc out of. It is a sleep, so I do have to roll the dice and risk them violent proccing and then still being able to do what they wanted to do. But it is really, really effective. And the fact that it offers four two-turn dots means that you can drop their HP by 40% when they take their two turns. So she offers massive damage. The weakness to Gina is, like I said earlier, I'm seeing a lot of Junos. So you have to have a way to still be able to kill the Juno. So for me, in combination with my more Verd, my Gina, and then I have two other units that then can kill a Juno quickly and push it back to control it so it doesn't get the healing off. This is why I have Poseidon and, and Teor both built. Sometimes I need two water CC units uh, that also offer big damage. 
So because of that, I can and am able to take her and use her early on. I do get caught a lot of times though with this. If they bring things like Juno and then they bring a Vero or they bring a Tetra, it really is difficult with Gina to try and get through those because you just lose all your damage completely. But if they don't draft those units, you can take her early on and, she, and you do offer enough damage that like I said, a lot of time people, the most common count of her is the Juno, but you can melt Junos if you have good enough artifacts on everybody and get enough damage out before the Juno will take a turn. Now her runes are a speed, HP and accuracy build. And then we've opted for a lot of additional damage on her on both the right side and the left side. So you can see I've got four lines of additionals on either side here. And because of that, her skill three is actually a four multi-hit as well. So she does a lot of damage outside of the dots. Just with her additional damage, she'll do a lot of damage to the enemy. And then they take the 40% damage when they take two turns off the dots. So she's actually a massive, massive AOE damage dealer on top of offering the strip and the one turn potential sleep as well. So she's been an absolute godsend for me. Prior to having her, I tried to run this team last season as well. I wasn't really able to run it at much higher rate than, than sort of very, very high C3 and low end of Guardian. We have been able to push up this season into high G1 and even G2 purely because of her, because like I said, she does fill that role for me of both the Joe Gun and the Chung Pung effectively enough. She's not as good as either of them. But like I said, it feels it effectively enough that I can use it and then not get cornered too badly most of the time and get enough wins. Now, if you guys want to check out how I'm using this monster box, I'll leave in the description below a few of the recent videos I put up where I've been using this team and using this exact monster box to both climb through Guardian and then up into G2. So I'll leave, like I said, I'll leave the description for those down below. Check those out if you want to get a rough idea on, on how I'm using it and what I'm how I'm drafting, what I'm drafting it into, the units that I'm seeing in return and how I sort of then deal with those units. Um, it'll give you an idea on how you can sort of play with the team. Other than that, guys, that's all I've got for you on this episode of Exposed. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.